This is Jonas from wishjelvis.com. In this video, we are going to learn how to use the if then else if else statements in wishgel. In the last tutorial, we created a process that would wait until the values of two signals were equal and then print out the word jackpot. But what if we wanted the program to take different paths based on the values of the two signals? Now let's see how we can create such branches in wishgel. I'm going to copy all of this code and save it as a new file which I will call t08 for tutorial 08 underscore if tb dot vht. Remember to change the entity and architecture names as well. Let's get rid of this last process which we won't be needing right now. Then I will erase the report statement from the second process. This will be our starting point for this exercise. We are left with one process that will increment the count up signal and decrement the countdown signal every 10 nanoseconds. We also have this second process which will wake up anytime the value of count up or count down changes. Now we want to create some code that will tell us which of the two signals has the largest value. I'm typing in if count up is larger than count down then. On the next line we can put the code that will be executed if the above is true. Let's use a report statement to print out count up is larger. Then I want to take another path if the opposite is true. I'm typing else if count up is less than count down then. This time I want to print out count down is larger. We have now covered all cases where the two signals have differing values. But if the two signals have equal values, none of the above conditions will be true. We can catch this case by using an else statement. Let's print out they are equal. Finally, we have to close the if statement using the keywords end if semicolon. It's time to simulate the design in ModelSim, so I will just add this file to the ModelSim project and compile it. But there's a compilation error. Let's see now. Aha, we forgot the report keyword in the last printout. A plus to you if you spotted that one. Let's try to compile again. No problems this time, and we are ready to simulate. When I press the run button, we can see that the printouts appear in the transcript window. At first, the else if statement prints out countdown is larger. Then, somewhere in the middle here, there's a line coming from the else branch saying they are equal. And finally, all the last printouts are from the if branch saying count up is larger. That's all I had for you in this video. Thank you for watching and check out vhjlwist.com for more tutorials and blog posts.